Hi, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be doing something a little different, something I've never done before, and that is to strip a locomotive and give it a fresh coat of paint. And today I will be using the Rokahan Z-Scale Shorty Locomotive. Let's get started. Again, having never done this before, I thought I would start really conservatively. So this is the locomotive shell in isopropyl alcohol, 91%, for about an hour. I didn't think it was going to have a big effect, but again, you got to start someplace. Okay, after that didn't do much, I thought, well, let's pop the shell back in the alcohol and leave it in there overnight, a good 24 hours. After 24 hours, here we are. I have to say, I was a little disappointed at this point. I, I didn't expect it to be stripped, but I thought we'd see some kind of results. One kind of interesting thing here, and one of the reasons I thought this would work, if you take a look at those three boxes up on top of the roof, I guess they're a representation of electrical boxes, they actually did, the paint did come off of those after the first hour in alcohol. That's why I really did think that, you know, after 24 hours would see better results. All right, well, I went from kind of zero to 60 here. I went from very mild with the alcohol to pretty aggressive with this goof off paint splatter remover. Now it's meant for acrylic or latex paints. So I thought, well, we'll give it a try. I have used it before on PVC pipe with great results. You'll see in a minute, the results right about there. Actually, you can see it started to get a little texturing. The brush felt a little funny in the hand and I didn't have a great feeling about this. Seeing that I was already this far into it and I've already applied this, well, in for a penny, in for a pound. Now the thing is, it did remove some paint. You can see that beige or tan paint start to come off. So, well, I was going back the other way now thinking, you know, this might work. And just as I began getting slightly optimistic, this began to happen. The material started melting, there it is, into a little a spider web of melted plastic. Oh, I don't even know why I'm still brushing it because I know the shell's gone. It's ruined. There it is. Okay, well, we may as well have a look at it up close and I don't know why, but let's have a look at it up close. Well, if nothing else, this serves as a pretty good cautionary tale. Do not use goof off to remove paint from a Z-scale shorty locomotive shell or probably any other shell for that matter. I don't feel all that bad. This was always going to be just a kind of a quick test with a couple of shells I had on hand. So since that didn't work, let's try something new. This really is kind of a spur of the moment weekend project. So I'm just going to use things I have on hand. Now that was a can of Tamiya primer, their gray primer, about half full and a couple of years old, but it still seems to have some life left in it. One thing I like about the Tamiya paint, it's about as fine a mist as you can get short of using an airbrush. Whether it's with this Tamiya spray can or an airbrush, I like to go with very thin coats of paint. Now here I am putting on the second coat and you can see very thin, very light, because I want to be careful not to hide any of the detail. Okay, I think this Tamiya is working out pretty well. We haven't melted the shell, so that's good. Now I just want to let this cure overnight. Okay, here's the paint job the next day, and you really can see why so many people like this Tamiya paint in a can. It does a remarkably nice job, very smooth paint. Well, very happy that I haven't melted this shell. I do want to make one change to this shell, and that is to the headlight above the rear door. I think we can do something there. Now, I would really like to be able to take credit for this little modification, but I'd seen it on another YouTube video. I'll put the link in the description below. But this user had drilled out the center headlight and inserted a nano LED. They also, oh, by the way, shaved off the side piece of plastic next to the headlight. And once lit up, once the shell is painted and this is lit up, it really looks terrific. Again, since I'm using paints I have sitting around, I'm using this Tamiya XF11. This is a matte paint. Um, it's actually, I think it was originally designed for recreating, according to Tamiya, recreating the color on World War II Japanese Navy aircraft upper structures. That's a mouthful. Well, I think it'll work for a little box cab too. That little paint mixer is the Badger paint mixer. I think it's around $10 and uh, it runs on a couple of AA batteries. Really is good, especially for these little bottles to mix your paint up incredibly well. I'll be using my airbrush to get the color on the box cab. 
So I just want to thin this paint out a little bit with the Tamiya thinner. And again, we'll use the Badger paint mixer just to get the thinner and the paint mixed up. Again, I can't stress this enough, for 10 bucks, these are great little devices to have on hand. I use the Pache or Pache H airbrush, depending on how you want to pronounce it, um, as my main airbrush. It's a, it's a fairly simple airbrush, it's a single action, but it really is kind of considered the workhorse of hobby airbrushes. The thing is bulletproof, it's easy to clean, and it gives really nice results as you can see here. Here's the first coat of paint going on. Very thin coats, we'll probably have to go with two, maybe three coats, but very, very, very light coats of paint. A couple of advantages of using these really thin coats of paint. One, you don't run the risk of paint going on too thick, hiding detail, and uh, the paint also dries much quicker between coats. I did have some nice footage of me masking up the body of the train with the Tamiya masking tape you can see up in the corner. But unfortunately, my compressor kicked on, vibrated the floor, the table, and kind of ruined the footage. But hey, it didn't melt the front of the train, so that's a plus. For the roof, I went with Tamiya XF16, their flat aluminum paint. And as always, thin coats are the way to go. Okay, now we get to the exciting part, taking off the masking tape and seeing how our paint job went. One more reason for using really thin coats of paint, especially when you use masking tape, is that there's much less chance of the paint creeping under the masking tape and ruining your paint job. Okay, we're looking pretty good. Overall, I'm pretty happy with this, considering it's my first time painting a shell. A very little bit of paint did creep out around the doors on the ends, but I think that had more to do with my masking and the fact that there are a couple of plastic protrusions there that I didn't quite nail with the masking, but I think I can cover that in weathering. Now this green paint was a matte paint, but it really looked more flat to me. Now I don't know if that's because the paint had been opened and was older, so what I did as a final coat, I mixed up a little bit of acrylic gloss, thinned it out, and just hit the whole train with it. This way that acrylic gloss picks up some of the, um, the reflections, the light reflections, and it's not a full gloss, but it does give it a little more definition. For a quick weekend project on a $9 shell, I'd call this one a success. Thanks for watching the video. Remember to like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.